Good evening. Welcome to The Next Word. I'm your host, Chris Warnke. And I want to ask, did you know that the number one sport in Taiwan is baseball? Tonight, we have a special guest. We have Jackie Fung, who is the member director of the Taiwan U.S. Cultural Association. And she's going to tell us a thing or two about baseball, as well as many other things about the beautiful country of Taiwan and the community here in the United States. So Jackie, I did not know that. That it's one of the number one sports in Taiwan. It is, yes. Fascinating. Yes, everybody is um, really into baseball, yes. And we do have few very good players actually uh, in the United States right now with a team. Oh, really? Yeah. With a team that's come from Taiwan? Uh, with uh, individual, but they joined a team right. here, yes. But, and they're one, you want, Taiwan's one of the few countries that has the largest national league. I mean, you have a number of national leagues, or little leagues, actually. Yes. Correct? Yes. Correct. Yes. yes. So I was fascinated with this. When did this start, this baseball fever in Taiwan? I mean, is this a fairly new... No, exactly. Phenomenal. It's from um, it's from a youth group that started. It. Yes, so um, kids practice baseball starting when they're really young, and um, I actually don't know how it become like a national thing, but everyone liked the excitement of it, and then the group um, activity working together, and I think that's something that we really like about it and that's what it's a team sport to, yeah the a team total sports. team sport which we need to do every day and yes and work yeah and, play. and connect with each yes. other yes mm -hmm. absolutely so speaking of team and team sports so the taiwan u.s cultural association for the greater washington area mm -hmm. is the organization that you're a member director of yes and kind of talk about kind of your your i mean your 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 mission or your you know, activities or what are you promoting and how are you bringing more focus to the community? We're trying to um, promote the Taiwanese culture here in the United States. We wanted to bring friends and family that have, that shows the passion, the interest. Um, we would like to educate them. We would like them to join us with this uh, group sports. Right. For example, like the Dragon Ball Festival that's coming up. May 19th? Yes, yes. May 19th In and Georgetown. the 20th. Yes. yes. Uh, it's actually at the Thompson Boat Center by the Kennedy Center. By the Kennedy Center, right. Yes, it will be on the beautiful Potomac River. I believe the, uh, the scene on the water is going to be beautiful. And um, it's, it's pretty much like we wanted to create this unique experience to everybody to... Uh, learn about it, have fun with it, and just get to know each other right. and build a strong relationship, like a local community relationship. Right. How many, and I, I'm putting you on the spot, but how many Taiwanese Americans are there in a ballpark figure here, even in this Washington, D.C.? Is this a large community? I guess I should ask you, is this large compared to other communities in the United States? I know Seattle probably has a large community and you know, maybe Los Angeles or San Francisco. Or, right. But is Washington, the greater Washington, a fairly, has a fairly sizable community? Yes, 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 I would say so. Comparing, not as big as um, the uh, Los Angeles community right. Right. or the Taiwanese community in, in New York, but certainly we are, um, I would say, the top three uh, among these local... Oh, really? In wow. the United States, yes. That's a, okay, that's a yeah. tremendous... That's, there are serious... many uh, professionals around here. Yeah. Well, so I've been to your country. You know, Great. And I loved it. Uh, I loved everything about it. Um, the food, of course. Okay. Um, We're big with that. You're big on with, that. Yes, yes. Yes. And we the famous food. dumplings. Yes. So anybody that's a foodie mm -hmm. needs to make sure that <laughs> they understand the Taiwan, Taiwanese cuisine. Yes. Um, and... Uh, but, you know, there are many kinds of dumplings, and I was got I got a tutorial, a lecture on how many kinds of dumplings there are. Wow, there are many, countless. Countless dumplings. I would say countless, like because every day they were trying to find different way to mm. recreate, to uh, innovate, 
So it's just not the same dumplings all the time, but they're trying to create something new, but they also keep the traditions too. Right. So that w I would say countless. They're always trying to really come up with something. Was something different? <laughs> yes. That's unbelievable. The other thing, of course, when I was in Taiwan, you know, we didn't, at that point, internet had not really been born. I mean, it was only, when you think about it, right. not that many years ago, but 19, early 1990s. But I was fascinated to know that, that Taipei ha was one of the first countries to embrace, or one of the first cities to embrace free Wi-Fi all over the, the city for people that visit, for people that live there. Um, Fascinating. That's smart. Yes, I would say it's a welcoming city and country that that invited all the travelers to come. We want everybody to come to our country and see that on this island we got the city like New York City, right. but we also got the beautiful countryside on the east coast, the parks, on the west, right. even the south we got yes. a beautiful beach. And if you wanted to do um, go for scuba diving, yes. we do have that as well. So pretty yes. much on that island you can experience you can do everything. everything. You have beautiful yeah. waterfalls. Yes, we do. You have beautiful, yes, yes. And you have some of the tallest buildings in the world. Yes, it is on the record for a little bit, right. then of course right. there are others that right. are trying to build faster than, right. than us, well, taller than us. Right. So of course we got, we got, the, the height is over than ours. It, it's already past the limit. But I believe that we still host the fastest elevator <laughs> the fastest elevator. Uh, uh, yes, the fastest elevator Guinness record. Really? Too. Yeah, I oh, believe that we still hold on to that record. Fascinating. Up to today, yeah. If there's nobody else trying to come up with even faster one, right. then yeah, we'll still be the one. So when I was there, I, I don't remember the tall build. I mean, I guess at that point it had not been built yet, but it's it's changed and it's such a dynamic city. You know, Taipei is, is, is wonderful, but it's I'm sure it's changed dramatically even since I've been, you know, since yes. I since I visited in 1990. Yes, um, I travel yeah. back every year and then it's still changing. Yes, of every course. Every year, yes. So now you were born here in I the was, United States? No, I was not born here. Um, I moved to the States in 2004, so I spent most of my lifetime in Taiwan. And you decided yeah. to make Washington your... My hometown, your hometown? My, my next hometown, yes. Yes, why? I mean, just... It's, it's uh, beautiful, it and is. it got a lot of the history, and all the um, knowledgeable professionals are all around here. But exactly. There's so I love much it. richness in the... Yeah, intellectual and diversity. Richness, yeah, and diversity. So I'm going to ask a little bit about yourself, because so today, what, I mean, what are you doing today? I mean, I know you're a member director of the, of the association, and of course, you promote the Dragon Ball. The Dragon Festival. Ball. The Dragon Ball. Right. Yes. Festival. But in your other life, what do you do? You, um, you mentioned you were drawn here. So it was profession, of, you know, the profession. Um, I mean, what kind of work did you get involved in, or was it was it family that had already been here, or was it you know? I mean, sometimes you 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 you, you migrate because of people that are you know they're already in the you know, in the country, I mean. Um, when I got to pick, the time I was just thinking, East Coast or West Coast, right? And I choose to be here because of the dynamic of the city, of right. the environment, right? And of course, it's um, not only that I got a chance to show everybody my culture, but I can also learn from others, right? It's very well balanced city, and I loved it. Well, and it's 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 a diverse, as we've said, it's a very diverse city, you know, and it's a city that you know wants to understand you know different exactly. you know, cultures, and um, so it's um, you know it's a, of course I'm a native, so I'm biased. <laughs> but now you live in Rockville, mm -hmm. Maryland, yes, which is also grown by leaps and bounds in terms of a community and you know it was much smaller 20 even 20 years ago now it's it's booming yes yes 
And so a lot of the Taiwanese community, do they live in the sort of the Montgomery County? Yes, Montgomery County and Fairfax County. I would okay. say these would be the two uh, county that with the most Taiwanese population. Okay. Yeah. So under the the umbrella of the Taiwan U.S. Cultural Association, there are a number of organizations that are within the umbrella. Yes. Can we talk? Tell me a little bit about some of them. Or sure. So uh, Taiwan U.S. Cultural Association. So we short for TASCA. TASCA, right? Uh, TASCA actually have three sections of it. Like it's. Uh, composed by three different parts. The first part would be the officers, the main officers, board of directors. And then the second part is the um, the Overseas Affairs Council, and they are highly recognized by our government because they have been promoting Taiwanese culture mm -hmm. um, throughout a year. And that's why we give them this honorary title. And then the th third section would be the nine community groups right now. Um, that's some of those are the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other one is the um, like um, cultural cuisine classes. We call it the Taiwanese mm -hmm. mama class. Oh, really? um, it, it carries a lot of these tradition cuisine that oh, we really? wanted oh, to use the ingredient here right. and then recreate the cuisine to be exactly the same right. taste, which is hard, right. Right. but the teacher's amazing. Um, so these would be the nine community groups uh, that form together. The reason why we have all these nine community groups because everybody has different connections. So when it comes to this big Dragon Ball event, pretty much is the largest one throughout the oh, year. Is it? Is it? Okay. Yeah, it is the largest one throughout the year. Then we have to pull everybody to come in and help us to put this event together. And the preparation started December. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, every year December. Like, this, like right now we are uh, in May 2018. We actually started December 2017. So it well, needs yeah. a lot of people to put in the effort to put this uh, events together. And that's why there's the Tusca, the big umbrella, and then uh, get all these nine community groups together and work towards so these, just, this goal, yeah, the Dragon Ball Festival. So the significance of the Dragon Ball Festival, tell me about the dragon and the, it has obviously a cultural significance. It, yes. It's, um, it's something that I learned when I was a kid. Um, it's about a story that um, the empire has, of course, they have several people working for him, of course. And one of the guy is a very honest guy that always give the best advice. And then, of course, there are some other people that are trying to set him up. And um, long story short, he passed away, and the bodies in the the, the the bodies in the river. So a lot of people are trying to go out and find this body, and to bring it back, and to prevent from the fish trying to eat the body. What? And they would put this. Um, uh, there's the leaf wrapped with rice. The oh, rice is oh, wrapped see. in the leaves, and then they would bring it to, out to the river and dump Brilliant. it out there. So, the fish so let the fish eat it. And that's the symbol of zongzi. That's what we call it. Okay. So it's wrapped in the triangle shape. Right. And um, all these people are trying to go out to find the body, and that's how it formed the dragon. I see. Oh, the the bolt. And then there are people on each side trying to go out there and trying to and find it. What a great story. Yeah. So we're going <laughs> to so see this. It's, it's a wonderful tradition. I'm not a great storyteller, I have to say. Cause no, you did a great <laughs> job. You did. So I want to come back to that, but we're going to take a short break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk more about it. But it's going to, it sounds wonderful. What a wonder, wonderful tradition. So. Thank you. You're watching The Next Word. We'll be right back.
So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back. I'm your host, Chris Warnke. And tonight we're having a conversation with Jackie Fung, who is the member director of the Taiwan U.S. Cultural Association. And it is quite a conversation because May 19th and 20th here in Washington, D.C., there's going to be the Dragon Bowl Festival put on by the Taiwanese American community. And it's going to be something to see and participate in. And I want to be there. I told you I'm going to row. <laughs> I have promised that I'm going to be, be an, in the Dragon Bowl Festival. We welcome you. Rowing. Even, even, last, though I, even last minute, we welcome you. You welcome me. Okay. Yes. So talk a little bit about that day. I mean, tell me about how it's set up. And it's going to be on the, near the Kennedy Center, in the yes. water, yes. in the Potomac. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, on the May 19th, the volunteers actually started at like 4.30 in the morning to set up the location. Wow. So you can see everybody really poured their heart into this event. Mm. And on the May 19th at 8.30, we have the opening ceremony. And that will be something interesting to watch because there will be cultural performance about three to five minutes. And then we have the ribbon cutting ceremony. So there will be red, big ribbons out there. And then we have the eye dotting ceremony. The eye dotting is very important because that's the time when these important um, people to open up dragon's eyes. Oh, really? When you open up the dragon's eyes is to, is to let the dragon to see what's out there. Okay. It's, a symbolized, it's a symbol of protection. Give, give them the lights and give them uh, the vision to see so, of course, that will be uh, a simple praying uh, for everybody's safety. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a tradition that's been doing, that we have been doing for 17th year. This year is the 17th uh, of, the of the Dragon Ball. So it's oh. been around in this area for a really long time, 17th year this year, yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. No idea. Something. Yeah. So this is great. It is. And then throughout the day, starting around 10, we will have um, arts and craft, like the Chinese arts and craft. Mm -hmm. We have uh, bamboo dragon, bamboo dragonfly, I'm sorry, bamboo dragonfly. And we have paper windmill. We have the um, figuring, the um, dough figuring that they were just yeah. made it right there. Mm -hmm. And we have another one called sugar figuring. Sugar figuring is very sp unique because they use these hot sugar and then they would just pour it on this cold marble. And then they use fork to draw out like a butterfly yeah. and then they would put it on a stick. Oh, that's wow. It's oh, very that's interesting. And of course we have the traditional Chinese uh, calligraphy, yep. And they will all be oh, wow. there from 10 to around 3.30 in the afternoon. And, and, then, and then when does the competition or the, the actual, I mean, the teams compete yeah, the in the actual compete. dragon, in the, yes. in the race? We have the youth group and we have the adults group. So on the May 19th will be the shorter distance. It will be 250 meters race. And then on the May 20th will be 500 meter race. And... Uh, the team so far, we have 46 teams signed up. 46 teams? 46 wow. teams. And then each team will have about 22 to 25 people because they need to rotate. Right, right. Yes. And it's hard work. It is hard work. <laughs> and it's all day. All day for them. It's, it's hard, but that's the, um, that, that is like a challenge. Right. And everybody has to cheer each other up. And the teams we have... Um, for example, so far we have Deloitte sign up, and we have uh, the local company like Pepco mm -hmm. sign up, and the uh, the other unique teams would be the Breast Cancer Awareness Team. Mm -hmm. They have been with us for over 10 years. They sign up every year, and they bring in great um, power and oh. influence to everyone. And we have hearing uh, impaired and visually impaired teams. Wow, that's wonderful. It is. And everybody's cheering for them. Yes. We love them. Yes. 
and I started to learn a little bit of sign language. So they're hearing impaired or vision impaired. Yeah. And they participate. Yes, they in the participate. Competition. That's wonderful. Yeah. So we're trying to learn a little bit of sign language yes, last yes. minute, trying yeah, to communicate yes. with them, make them feel welcome. And we do have two teams that from out of states. Uh, one is from New York, and the other one is from Miami, the Red Dragons Miami. They're very good. They're, they're good. very competitive. So they're serious. This is a serious team. They are a serious team, and they are trying to compete with our local one, the DC oh, Dragon Ball okay. team. And you let them in. <laughs> yeah, we let them in. It's going to be very exciting. That's right. Yeah. So that's all day. So that's um, the, the 19th and the 20th. So it's a two-day. Right. A two-day. Um, two-day event. Two-day event. Wow, it's going to be. And then how do you sign up? Oh, you can sign up online. Okay. And uh, simply just search DC Dragon Ball Festival, and you can sign up online. Okay. Yes. So this is a whole new a whole, a activity whole new. <laughs> that Washington has. Um, he's, it's seen, though, for, what, 17 years? Yeah, it is the so 17th year. We're wonderful. hoping that we keep promoting it and become the top 100 events in the DC area. Oh, that'd area. be wonderful. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yes. So, oh my gosh. so one one area. Let's go back to, to you know to Taiwan, which I didn't know, and of course now there's a craze for brewing companies and whiskey tastings, and I understand that in 2015 Taiwan had what got the the world's had the world's best malt whiskey. Yes, which is something, you know, yes, I was surprised very. to learn about. So that's when you go to Taiwan. I'm very proud. Yes, yeah, so tell me about that because people will be interested to know this. Um, the whiskey, it's quite new, but then um, I would say the technique that they have is very interesting. They do have a factory out there in E-Line that you can go out and mm. uh, have a tour, and the tour is free, and they will let you taste the sample mm. of it. Um, Believe it or not, my, my wedding wine actually is, is from that factory. Oh, really? And my husband even educated me on that. And I said, I have no idea about the Taiwanese so whiskey. Good. And he said, how come you don't know? You are well, from... I, yeah. And I, he said, it's such a smooth, uh, fragrant, single malt whiskey that I ever really? had. And then the price is so reasonable that he said, I could not believe that... You didn't know? I didn't so know. So this was your wedding drink? This was in your wedding? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Everybody wants to take a bottle, but that's, unfortunately you cannot. <laughs> they cannot get out bottles at the wedding. Yeah, that was, so I, that was fascinating. I had it no is. idea. Because yeah. Taiwan has so many interesting facets. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know that baseball was its national sport. And, mm -hmm. you know, of course, you've done so much to, you know, to um, embrace tourism. Right, yes. And make it such an incredible, rich experience for people. Whether they go to the gorge or they go to the national, your nine national parks, your waterfalls, your beaches, you know, plus the history of the whole, you know. Yes, you know, and the then we're very and, good in transportation, so it makes all the travelers easy to right, get around right. the city to countryside. So you have a good metro? Yes, we do have so a good metro So I have to talk system. to you about the metro because this is an interesting, you have bathrooms in your metros. Right. Yes. Which also light up when people are inside or they come out. I mean, it, right? It's very yes. high-tech bathrooms in it the is. metro themselves. In this, right? It, it is, and then it's in each station. In each station. Each station. Oh so it's just not. Oh, some station, some bigger station has the uh, restroom. They have it throughout all the metro system. And the one that you mentioned, the one with the lights, they actually is the door lock. Oh, the door lock? Yes. So every time the door is locked, the outside it shows that it's red. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So it, it helps people. It, it moves people around. So it makes it more efficient. So, so that brings me to the, are a lot of U.S. cities and, 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 the, and the architects and the, and the planners for cities in the U.S., are they coming to Taiwan to look at your look at Taipei and see what you're doing. I mean, you, you, we talked about, well, New York as an example that's, you know, that has, has looked at the free Wi-Fi kind of concept for its tourists. Yeah. Or, or trying to institute something like that. I think they're trying to institute something like that because right now the New York City has uh, a hub for you to charge your phone. Yes. But in Taiwan, all the metro stations, you do have a... A hub to charge your phones? Every oh station, gosh. yes. 
That's another whole unique. <laughs> Every metro station has has a place for you to charge your phone. Really? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, because right now we rely on technology so right. much. Right. So the uh, city and the government realize that that's the necessity. That's the necessity. While it's we're smart. promoting tourism, we have to think about what, what the would tourist make wants and what's going to be the ease yeah. and yes, the oh, most convenient wonderful. for you. Did you also mention an Uber, even an Uber, in an Uber car, you have free Wi-Fi? Yeah, they will provide That's personal hotspot. They will. <laughs> yes. I love it. We should talk about that. That's <laughs> something Washington and them. That's interesting. That's fascinating. It is. So yeah. all these things, you know, I know China is just so far ahead in terms of making the tourists feel at home, giving them the experience, and making it easy. We like to put ourselves into someone's else's shoes, too. Which is smart. <laughs> you all have, and as a country, and then you have your incredible markets, and you know, walking all the markets and the food selections, and the, you know, and you know everything. I mean, it. it I loved it. Would you want to it. go? So I want to go back. <laughs> I want to go back. I definitely want to go back. I did not get to the national waterfalls, and mm -hmm. you know, and the gorge, you know, and the parks. Um, those but are one beautiful. Day. Hmm? Yeah, those are beautiful well, those places. Are just, national treasures yes and again you know people and the tourists today is very different they want environmentally friendly in places to go to you know they care about what they have you know what countries have as a resource and that they know they're being taken care of and um and, and experience that rich culture and history yes and we are also uh promoting environmentally friendly uh city as well yes so that is something that we put a lot of focus on. Yes. Like we try not to use plastic bags when we're shopping. Do you all have to pay for them there? Like yes. We do here? Okay. Throughout the country. Right, throughout yes. the country. Yeah. So did we get that from you all too, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good thing. Everybody yeah. trying to uh, reduce it a little bit. And then we are very big in recycling. So oh, yeah, even great. at McDonald's, we do have to separate the cups, the straws, everything, while we throw things out oh, away. Oh, wow. Yes. Boy, that's fascinating. So we all have to go over and learn, <laughs> learn, take some lessons. This has been wonderful. I wish we could talk more. Me too. Yeah, thank you, though. Thank you, Jackie. And I'll see you on the 19th. Sure. Which I'll probably be in the in the in the youth in the youth competition. No, and you would join a doubt team. I don't I know. Was, I think I'd be in the youth competition. I would see you on a boat. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. You've been watching the next word. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and good night.